Hello, this is a freshword.org, and uh, our entire blog is focused on Christ, culture, and commentary. So when something happens culturally on the internet, or whether it's on television or media, or anything like that, where they're attacking the gospel, or uh, it's something in media that's misrepresenting the gospel, it is our job, it's our blog's job to address it and speak to it, and that's what this video will attempt to do. A friend of mine made me aware of a video that uh, Anthony Browder and Rock Newman put out. Rock Newman has a show in the Washington, D.C. area. And then Anthony Browder went and uh, was on his show. I've heard about Anthony Browder for over 15 to 16 years now uh, because he has been hoodwinking people and pulling good men out of the faith for many, many years now. And he does that. Um, as all cults do, or all people who uh, are able to fool others, he does it by speaking a lot of truth. So before I go through this video and I hit the points where uh, he lied on Christianity or uh, misrepresented history, I want to talk about all the points that are absolutely true. Because any cult that's able to pull Christians away from the faith, as Anthony Browder does here, uh, and for those who are unfamiliar with him, he styles himself as a, mem a memory recovery specialist. And this memory recovery specialist, he's been doing tours on the Potomac and he speaks at Howard and he does the, the tours and the circuits of HBCUs. Um, when I research him, he doesn't appear to be a real scholar, but that part doesn't bother me because, you know, there's a lot of us out here who don't have scholarly credentials, but we still have the freedom to learn and to teach truth. So the fact that he's uh, not established as a quote unquote real academic scholar, that part doesn't bother me. What bothers me um, is him not representing Christianity fairly when he attacks it. And him and Rock Newman both got together and did a real job on the faith of Christianity. And I'm assuming are pulling people by the hundreds, if not thousands away from their faith because they haven't done the proper study themselves. So this video hopes to refute some of that. So let me agree with all the points that he said that were absolutely right, that, that maybe the Christian church needs to talk about more. Uh, first thing that he said was accurate. Uh, the original man was black. All science points to that, and the Bible doesn't speak against that. The second thing he points out is how much of heritage of Kemet, also known as Egypt, was stolen and was remixed or repackaged in ancient Europe. That's a fact. You can read a book called Stolen Legacy that'll speak to that. Third, the third thing, he, ironically, a guy for a guy who is such a race peddler, um, a guy who makes his money off of racism and racial hatred. Ironically, he says something deep and true. He says there's no such thing as race in the full tape. I fully agree. There's no such thing as race. So it's pretty sad that race is your uh, great motivator in life. Um, he goes and says the exact truth that Jesus was a person of color and that Nazareth, where Jesus was born, was, was is in Northeast Africa. The whole concept of the Mideast uh, being styled as the Mideast. It's not the Mideast. It really is um, part of the continent of Africa. Uh, we have been mentally trained not to think of it that way. Um, and that that is part of brainwashing that has occurred in Western teaching. Um, he also goes on to say that 11 o'clock on Sunday is the most segregated hour in America. That is absolutely true. And he speaks, of, uh, he makes some distinctions between the difference between Kemet and Egypt. And if you study more, that is absolutely true. And that's a good distinction to make. You can research it on your own, the distinctions between Kemet and Egypt. He also, later on in the video, attacks biblical customs, uh, uh, excuse me, extra biblical customs, like some of our holidays that are absolutely bogus. There are concepts of, um, how we worship our holidays in American Christianity that are not accurate. I can't defend them because guess what? They're not in the Bible. And he uses those customs in order to attack Christianity as a whole. My only point is uh, he what he's saying about Christmas and Easter and those kind of things, uh, 
those points are true, but he can't truly attack any of the principles that are within the Bible. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play his video. I'm going to play the Rock Newman show that featured Anthony Browder. And I'm going to, uh, it's heavily edited just so that we would have enough time to get to everything because I don't disagree with everything. So I'm not going to play for you the things that I agree with. So I'm only going to play the points where he attacks Christianity or he misrepresents history. And then as we play that, we're going to stop and then we're going to cover some things or I might even take you to some scholars, some folks who have studied this a little deeper than I so that they can actually refute what he's saying as well. Thank you for your time. Uh, most people of African ancestry, African Americans in this country, by and large, are known to be the most religious people on in the in the country, probably in the world. Right? African Americans, yeah. yeah, man. Sunday Sunday is a very very big day where the overwhelming majority of African Americans worship in house houses of Christian belief, right. So if we, if we if we remember what Dr. King said, eleven o'clock on Sunday is the most segregated hour in America. Yes. Black folk go to a black church and worship a white Jesus. White folk go to a white church and worship a white Jesus. First objection to what Anthony Browder is saying. Um, I go to church uh, in a predominantly African American church. I my mother church, my home church is a predominantly African American Baptist church. And every black person I know, uh, they understand that Jesus was a person of color. So where does he get? And, and, and Anthony Browder's from D.C. And I've I've extensively traveled in D.C. and gone to churches in D.C. And every black person I met understands that Jesus was a person of color. So who is Anthony uh, Browder referring to, and who's he hanging out with? The, the, the geographical reality of the place where Jesus was born. There were no white people there at the time. That's another issue. I don't want to be at all trite with religion. Sure, I don't play with people's religion. Okay, Rock Newman, you're not being honest there. This whole video, this whole, this whole uh, show, uh, you're asking uh, canned questions to Anthony Browder. Y'all are obviously associates or friends. And then you say you don't want to be trite with religion. You don't want to mess with anyone's religion. Then you make a reference to a family member going to go see Anthony Browder and asking, her, is she going to go to hell? You listen, you're playing games there. You are lying there. Okay. The, the purpose of that show and bringing uh, Tony Browder on that show was to bring people out of their Christianity. So for you to go in this in this segment and say you don't want to be trite with someone's religion is a lie. But scripture talks about Jesus being an individual who had hands and feet the color of not just brass, but burned brass. Right. That's dark. And hair like lamb's wool. Um, that's not blonde and blue eyed. When did Jesus and how did Jesus as a symbol become blonde and blue eyed? Well, um, most people that I know who are Christians and, and, and lovers of the Bible, love the lovers of Jesus, know nothing about a man by the name of Eusebius. Eusebius was a man who in 325 uh, was uh, Constantine's Karl Rove. He organized uh, the Nicene Council and literally determined what books were going to go into the Bible. Let me, let me just say something. This is a common misrepresentation and it is a lie. All the the Nicene account the Nicene Council did a lot of things. One thing that it did not do was determine the canon of the Bible. So for him to go and, and build this boogeyman of Eusebius, Eusebius was one of hundreds of bishops, and these hundreds of bishops came together and came up with some common beliefs. So to turn Eusebius into this Karl Rove boogeyman is not historically true or 
accurate. Eusebius didn't determine what books were in the Bible. There is a moratorium fragment that, that, that shows the canon developing well before the Council of Nicaea. We have fragments of the Bible that were that have been discovered that predate the Council of Nicaea. So for him to go and state that the Council of Nicaea put books in the Bible or determined what books were in the Bible, the canon was developed later. What they what they came out with in the Council of Nicaea, or the most uh, noteworthy thing that they came out with, was they made a determination that in their belief that Jesus was of the same substance of the Father. It had nothing to do with the books being formulated. And Eusebius was not working the council by himself. There were hundreds of bishops, and then there were even hundreds of more assistants that were there who came together and they met over a long period of time. These were people who came out of Christian persecution and they came to a conclusion. These were men who had integrity that came out of persecution that came up with a common doctrine. This is a misrepresentation of the Council of Nicaea. You know, what, what we understand very clearly is that Every people have a right to interpret their relationship uh, to the Creator as seen through their own cultural lens. But what Constantine did was to use newly created religion, Christianity, as a means to not only control people physically, but also to control their minds. And it was Eusebius who called together, I believe, 88 bishops who met... That is inaccurate. It is not 88 bishops. Some people quote it as having 250 bishop, bishops and other people quote having 318 bishops present. But Eusebius calling 88 bishops, I don't know where he got that from. The Bible is the inerrant, infallible word of God and how dare you challenge that. Well, uh, I, I only talk about what I know. And uh, I know that um, the Bible was a book that was that is comprised of 66 different chapters that were written by 66 different men. The Bible has 66 books, not 66 chapters, and it has 40 writers, not 66 writers. You only talk about what you know, huh? Period of two thousand years that's a fact and, and and if we deal with the facts and the facts were not i'm not meant to take away anyone's belief but i'm just stating facts i'm just mm -hmm. stating what i know mm -hmm. and so anyone who has studied the bible anyone who has conversations with theologians knows these facts and and and, and so there's a difference between belief and knowledge belief is something you accept without proof belief is not something that you necessarily accept without proof Dr. King described it as walking up a staircase and not being able to see the end of it. So you can see a staircase and you have some evidence, you have some proof, but you're not, you're not able to understand everything. That's what belief is. Belief, though, is not the denial of evidence and proof and science. He's wrongly representing faith and Christian doctrine again. Enslaved all over the world, but most people don't know that it was Pope Eugenius IV who uh, authorized the first papal bull, giving the Portuguese uh, the right to enslave African people. Now, it says in the Bible, uh, in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not steal and thou shalt not kill. So if Europeans just followed those two uh, commandments, we would be having this conversation in Africa, sitting under a mango tree. Okay. He's attacking now all of Christianity because of what some Pope did. All right. Let the Catholic Church explain.